Now, Tom, one of the quantifiable metrics with the fire service is fire frequency. Relatively easy to measure, but the challenge is how do you quantify a fire that doesn't happen? Right? So it's good to have less, fewer fires over time, but how do you know how many fewer fires you have because the department has a good fire prevention program? Because they're going into the schools and doing the public safety messaging because they have a dedicated fire prevention officer. Have you done any analysis before in your past as a chief where you've taken a look at you know, fire prevention maybe over time and how it's decreased from a fire frequency perspective, how you've compared to, to others? Is that a way that fire departments will typically measure that metric for the public? It's one of the only ways that you can measure that uh, metric because how do you know uh, what would have happened? I mean, you're trying to speculate what might have happened if you didn't provide public education if you didn't uh, do code enforcement and do building inspections, what that impact might be. And the only way you can really take a look at it is exactly uh, by comparing peers. And one of the problems that you have in organizations is defining peers. Right. And right. trying to find peers that uh, match your situation. Uh, you can't take a department in Florida and compare them to a department in the Northeast. It really doesn't work. So you've got to get in regionally. You have to get uh, to trying to determine exactly uh, what departments mirror what your organization uh, risks are. Because if you have a small uh, commercial part in your community and it's more residential, you can't compare to a large industrial city with uh, less residential. So it's very, very difficult to determine who are actually peers and then to actually quantify the data or are you all capturing the data the same way? Right. It's a bigger problem. Uh, it's a whole other situation, yeah. So you got to identify the peers, I guess, built environment, the region, um, population, the density. I mean, those are all things that they matter when you're talking about comparisons. And if you're able to find a good peer group, 10, 15, 20, 25 peers, I would think that if you take the, the average of all those peers, you get a good set of data that you compare yourself to. You can find a good metric with a good denominator, fire frequency per thousand people, fire frequency per built environment, whatever it is. That's a good metric from a, um, a point in time perspective. So my community, we have one fire per thousand people every year. The average across the board is 1.2 fires per thousand people every year. That's a good benefit, the point two fires um, that basically you're saving because you have a good fire service prevention um, program in, in place. Right. And you're actually doing that community risk reduction, which means you're actually in the community understanding what your risks are, determining those risks, and then creating your education program for the higher risks. And we do it a lot in the fire service where we do the youth and the elderly because they've always been two standard risk areas. But there's, there's risk that we're not looking at yet, and that's type of construction. And the uh, impacts, the silly little one, that we need to educate people on our candles. Candles became one of the highest causes of fires in this country, uh, only second to unattended cooking. And the two of those issues are really important. And if you can get your demographics around what those, where those candle fires and unattended cooking fires are, and you can make a program to go out and address those, now you're positively uh, affecting your community. Yeah. And now you're coming back to data and analytics. You talked about how candles are becoming a big, a big issue from a fire uh, incident perspective. Cooking has always been very high. I think the NFPA's um, Prevention Week theme a couple of years ago was a focus on cooking. Right. And one of the reasons that they can do that is they can point to the statistics that say that cooking is a significant uh, driver of fires. Right. Demographics, where do you know where fires occur within your community, right? You talk about targeting them. You have the notion of um, candles. You have the notion of cooking. You also have the notion of where are the fires occurring within your, within your community. I, I think there's a lot of departments out there that are focusing on that. I've seen some larger departments they're actually putting programs in place, Philadelphia, Cleveland, I think New York has done it, where they're really identifying where the communities are that are having issues within their jurisdiction, and they're focusing prevention concepts there, whether it's smoke alarm distribution, um, awareness campaigns to the schools. That's a really smart use of data and analytics for the fire service.
It is, and it, it, it's a it's kind of a change. You right. know, we would look at patterns established by, uh, you know, we've had five fires over in that area lately. Maybe we should take a, take a look at why. Well, now using data and analytics, we could take a look at that right away. We could see trends occurring earlier. And so consequently, we can start the prevention and education programs earlier.